The early stage of the job application process somehow looks very similar to the filtration process during team making. The T represents the resumes and the C is ATS or applicant tracking system. The ATS filters the resumes with silly mistakes, which can be avoided, and only this filtered T reaches a human reviewer. But the job application process doesn't stop there. Now you hardly have six seconds to impress the reviewer, otherwise you are out. Now I have been on both sides. I have prepared my resume that got me selected as a comms specialist at my current organization and I have also sifted through 178 applications for a fellowship program at my previous organization. I have spent 15 hours analyzing and researching the best practices that got candidates selected at the top consulting firms and top tech companies. And I also came across the worst practices that recruiters absolutely hate. And in this video, I'm going to synthesize all the information so you can avoid all the mistakes that destroy your chances of selection. By the way, stick around for mistake number four because that is a mistake a lot of recruiters absolutely hate. Mistake number one, unoptimized contact details. A lot of candidates use unprofessional emails. To give you a start, 76% of the resumes are discarded for an unprofessional email address. Now, the bad example for an Unprofessional email address could look like tushar the tech bro at gmail.com, but a good example could look like tushar at gmail.com. Now, this looks much more cleaner. You can even use tushar at gmail.com. Another mistake within this mistake is not using a LinkedIn ID in your resume. According to a research, resumes with a link to a comprehensive LinkedIn profile have a 71% better chance of hearing back. But there is a caveat. If your LinkedIn profile is not optimized, you don't have a profile picture, your work section, about section, experience section are not complete, then I would personally avoid adding the LinkedIn profile. By the way, LinkedIn is such an underrated tool and it deserves its own video. So if this particular video gets 100 comments asking for a LinkedIn video, I'll be happy to make a LinkedIn video just like this one. Mistake number two is inconsistent layout and using multiple fonts. Now to have consistency in your resume, you can follow these rules. For the text size, the name can be somewhere between 14 to 20 points. The headlines could be 12 to 14 points and the body could be 10 to 12 points. The font types that you can use are Arial, Calibri, Open Sans, Sans Serif, Times New Roman. Now I know these resume rules can get a bit overwhelming and uh, having a consistent theme and a layout this can get really intimidating. So if you want to download a free resume template, here is a QR code. You can scan it and download it while going to the free resume template section. Or you can also check out the link in the description. It's free. Mistake number three is not having a professional summary. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember what I did in my pre-final year. I asked for a resume from one of my senior. I remember I just copy and pasted the professional summary or the objective that we usually have in our CVs or our re resume. And mine looked like this. To gain expertise in the field of whatever the field uh, you have, but mine was food processing technology. To gain expertise in the field of food processing te uh, technology, along with working on challenging assignments that shall yield the twin benefits of job satisfaction and professional growth. Now, when I look back, this seems so stupid, but we don't have any idea because we, we are just starting out and we are just making a resume and that is completely fine. But if you are just copying and pasting the objective from your bashmates or from your seniors, then how are you going to stand out? Now, here's a prompt that you can use for ChatGPT to make a professional summary that is customized for you and for the job where you are applying. Highlight the top three skills required in job and create three bullet points from my experience to show them. Add achievements in the same format mentioned in the job specification. Here is my experience and here you will add your experience and bullet points. And here is the job description. Here you will copy and paste the job description. Now this prompt will give you three bullet points which are not only specific to your unique experiences but also customized for the job where you will be applying. Now I know you are saying that Arip, you have mentioned experiences and I'm just a fresher. How do I actually gain that experience when I don't have any experience? So don't worry, towards the end of this video, I have a specific point where I'll be sharing some of the tools, some of the resources, some of the websites that you can go to and fill out your work experience section. Now, let's say you're going for shopping and you want to buy a pair of shoes. Bituvia flips the shoe, you know, the classic shoe flipping that these guys do and he uh, loosens the laces and he presents you the shoe and you realize that the size of that particular shoe is number seven, but for your feet, for your specific feet, you need a number nine size. Now you tell him that, uh, yeah, I need uh, a number nine and you have given me number seven. And he says that, you know what? Here we will be only giving you a number seven shoe. Now that sounds ridiculous because why would you wear a number seven shoe when you have a feet for which you need a number nine shoe? Guess what? We completely ignored this philosophy while applying to jobs. Because for a specific job, it is possible that they require a number nine shoe and you are giving your resume 
which is number seven to all the places, to all the organizations and companies, a number seven shoe. Maybe someone requires a number five shoe. Maybe someone requires a number six shoe. So what do you do? You customize your resume. And that brings me to the mistake number four, which is hated, absolutely hated by a lot of recruiters because the candidates don't have their resumes customized as per the job description. The ADS typically eliminates 75% of the resumes due to a lack of keywords and phrases. Now here again, we are going to utilize ChatGPT to extract the keywords or the skills that are relevant to that particular job description. Here's the prompt. Assume you are a hiring manager. Share the top five skills critical for the following job. Now here you will enter the job title, rank them by the level of importance and mention a short description of their importance. Here is the job description. And in this placeholder, you are going to paste the job description. Hey, by the way, if you have learned something valuable from this video till this point, I would appreciate it. If you can hit the like button, now you can you can hit it now moving on to the mistake number five and that is work experience is not quantifiable now i have personally seen this in a lot of resumes uh, of my batchmates as well that they are just stating out their responsibility here's what i mean if you are a customer relationship manager and if you if you just say that i have managed customer relationships you're not really saying out loud that what are your accomplishments or what are what were the outcomes of your job if you are a team manager and if you just say that i have ma i have managed a team then it just states your responsibility if you are a website developer and you just say that i have managed a website then it just states your responsibility your job role is already mentioned in the work experience and just by looking at that, me, if I'm a recruiter, I can understand that, okay, if you are a website developer, it is given, it is by default that you are managing the website. So I don't really care about the responsibility. I rather care about the accomplishments, about the outcome or the impact that you have had. So rather than stating the job responsibility, we are going to use an XYZ principle or XYZ rule. This XYZ bullet formula is going to help us to show the impact and accomplishments in a quantifiable manner. Remember, data gives confidence and that is why we are using this specific formula. So what is this XYZ formula? This XYZ formula is something like accomplished X as measured by Y by doing Z or Z or Z. So for example, for a website developer, it could be something like accomplished a 20% increase in conversion rates as measured by our in-house analytics tool. It could be whatever tool you're using by doing A-B testing and iterative improvements to the website's call to action buttons and landing pages. Now it's possible that your work doesn't always translate into these quantifiable results. So in that case, you can also mention something like the hour saved, the percentage of efficiency increase, or if you have trained X number of employees, something like that. To give you some more inspiration in terms of these terminologies, I have linked 150 CV buzzwords that you can go down in the description. Check it out, it's completely free, it is from Indeed. No, Indeed is not sponsoring this video. Uh, Ari Varshad is sponsoring this video. Now, there are some other silly mistakes that applicants make, and even though they are relatively small, but they deserve a mention because when these small silly mistakes add up, they also, uh, you know, help to reject your resume. So I'm going to quickly breeze through all these small, small mistakes. Mistake number six is adding an image. No, I do not want to see your face, Toshar. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I do want to see your face. You look lovely, but uh, we do not want the HR manager or you know the reviewers to judge you on the basis of your face. We rather want them to judge you on the basis of your skills, accomplishments, and what you can bring to the table. Mistake number seven, too many buzzwords. Remove these buzzwords, team player, hardworking, fast learner, proven track record, results oriented, go getter, passionate, please get rid of these words. Mistake number eight, it's very, very small, but still can have significant, very tiny impact, not significant, but it can help the recruiters or the reviewers. So basically it is having a proper file name of your resume. Rather than just saying resume.pdf or resume.docx, you can say it's something like Karan underscore sing underscore resume underscore 2023.pdf. Now, why is it so specific? Because sometimes when you are selected and you have been called for your interview, these reviewers or the interviewers will be having your resume printed out and when they have to print it out, what are they, what are they gonna do? They are going to search for your resume by your name probably. And uh, you want it easier for them to just search for your resume. Now I'm just making up a resume, uh, making up a scenario I know, but we have to be very careful with these small and tiny things. Mistake number nine is skill rating. Please do not quantify your skill level unless and until you have been given some kind of score or some rating by a body, by some uh, recognized organization. I know on Canva as well, there are a lot of resumes which have these small circles, small five circles, and people fill out three out of five circles for Adobe Photoshop. 
four out of five circles for WordPress development. Uh, if you are really doing that uh, on your own, I mean, how should I really trust you? So this is a really murky area and I do not want to delve into that. So I will completely avoid adding skill rating. Mistake number 10 is mentioning obvious skills like MS Office. You are expected to know Microsoft Office. This is a very obvious skill. So just by adding that, it is not adding any kind of significant value to your resume. So you can avoid this action. Mistake number 11 is making grammatical errors. So just to make sure, just copy and paste all the content in Grammarly. No, it is not sponsored by Grammarly. Or you can even have a Grammarly extension installed on your Chrome web browser so it can analyze the mistakes in your Google document. Otherwise, you can also copy and paste the resume content in ChatGPT and analyze it for the grammatical mistakes as per US English or British English, whatever works in your country. Mistake number 12, multiple pages. If you have less than 10 years of experience, I would personally recommend to have just one page. This will not apply if you are in academia because in that particular domain, you are required to list out all the review papers and research papers that you have published or written. Mistake number 13, mentioning skills only so that you can bypass the ATS. No, this is an unethical practice if you just lie out on your resume. What happens if you have mentioned, uh, let's say Tableau or uh, you know data analysis or Python or something like that? and they, the reviewers ask you, or the interviewers ask you something specific from that particular skill. You're going to be black and it will reflect poorly on your reputation. Please avoid that. Mistake number 14 is signing a declaration. A lot of people sign a declaration that all the information uh, written in this particular CV or resume is correct as per my knowledge. Of course, when you're submitting a resume, I am assuming that you have, uh, you know, you are not lying basically. And I don't want to I don't even want to explain this point because this is so silly. Why would you sign a declaration? Now this mistake, and I know a lot of freshers are waiting for this particular one, they do not have or they don't have sufficient soft skills or hard skills to add in their particular resume. So if you do not have hard skills or soft skills, what are you gonna do? You can go to these websites. You can go to Google Digital Marketing Courses, Coursera, edX, Udemy. You can go to this particular website where we have one of the most trending skills right now that is generative AI. And that is also free. You can go to HubSpot Academy if you are interested in social media marketing or content marketing courses. Again, HubSpot Academy gives you free certificates. I mean, the courses are free. They are qualitative from experts. And of course, the certificate helps as well. Ignu's website, you can go to Internshala for internships. You can go to swam.gov.in for courses. You can go to classcentral.com for free courses. You can go to LinkedIn Learning, which is a great tool if you want to upscale your soft skills. You can go to Growth School as well, by the way. None of these uh, websites or organizations are sponsoring me. Uh, I have personally taken a couple of workshops from Grow School and they were fantastic. You can go to Unstop for competitions and challenges. You can go to studentcompetition.com for competitions. Now, if you want to gain some experience and you cannot actually go out in the workplace, you can stay at your home and you can do, uh, you can go to Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer or people, up, uh, people Per Hour to gain some freelance experience. To gain some volunteering experience, you can go to iVolunteer. To attend online and offline workshops, you can go to Eventbrite. You can go to 42 courses if you are a creative professional. Let's say for me, I am comp specialist for graphic designers, for maybe web designers as well, for illustrators, for animators, for people in the creative domain basically. They can go to 42 courses and they have amazing courses for creative people from the best brands globally. Last year, I took uh, a course from Ogilvy on behavioral economics and it was fantastic. Yes, it is a bit expensive. So I would personally recommend this for someone who is actually working and not just a student. If you are working in the development sector, that is not for profit sector, basically, you can go to Acumen Academy and you can take the, co uh, take the courses from experts, get a certificate for free. Now, if you are five years or 10 years in your journey as a career professional, you have the capacity to invest in yourself, you can check out online.hbs.edu, that is Harvard Business School, or you can also go to professional.bc.harvard.edu where you can take some courses. Now, of course, these uh, specific websites, these two last websites are going to break your bank. If you are a student, I wouldn't recommend that. That is why this is specifically for people who have been in the domain for the last, last five or 10 years. Now, just taking those certificates and having those courses is not going to be enough. And that is why here is a prompt that will help you illustrate your knowledge in your resume. Customize as per the job description, obviously. So here's the prompt. I finished the course. Uh, you will enter the name of the course by course provider and cover these topics. Now you will enter the name of three to five topics that you have covered. Create a resume bullet point for it. That makes me a desirable candidate for the job of now here you will enter the job role now even when you have avoided all those mistakes there is still a chance that you are limiting your opportunities limiting to attract your opportunities and that can only be possible by 
not actually by customizing your resume, but by building your LinkedIn profile. So again, if you are interested in a LinkedIn video where I would be researching some top LinkedIn creators and analyzing their best practices, Please let me know down in the comments if we get 100 comments within the next week of publishing this video. I'll be making a video on LinkedIn. I'll see you next time. Class dismissed.